Well, thank you so much for having me and uh, for the invite, Katja and Ramon. I'm uh, really pleased to be here uh, representing Stipo. Um, Yap already uh, showed, uh, showed you a bit about who Stipo is, but I'll explain a little bit further and also uh, let you see what kind of tools we use at Stipo, uh, just as Katja said, to bridge, uh, to be the bridge for people and to connect, but also in developing areas. So STIPO is a multidisciplinary team of uh, urban developers. We aim for um, uh, sustainable development and the human skill. So we really work on places where people feel at home, not only now, but only for also for the next 10 or 50 years. So what we do in our projects at STIPO, we work on public spaces, uh, we do social renewal on urban issues, we organize sustainable transformation, and we create vision concepts and long-term strategies for municipalities or project developers. Um, I won't get into this uh, a lot because Yap already told you about our core values, but here you can see them again, our five uh, core values. And at STIPO, we have this um, way of looking at placemaking. It's, you can see it in this triangle. Um, these three items are really important for us. So first you have the hardware. Those are like the actual buildings standing in a place, the streets, the movement, the transition be between private and public. Uh, so it's really about anything physical in a place. And then we have the software that's more about the people in the place, the community values, the character and the soul of the city is really important to us. So how do people behave in the area? What do they think is important to have in public spaces? That's really the aim of the software. And then the orgware, that's where both these things kind of come together. It's about the organization around the place. Like how do people participate? What kind of uh, organizational legal agreements are there? And uh, management and financial organization. So the orgware is more about how can you make these hardware and software be in a place for a longer term by organizing it around it. And we believe that if you focus on these three things that you can create beautiful places uh, around the city. So one of the tools that we use at Stipo is uh, a place game. It's really practical. It's uh, been um, created by projects of public places, spaces. And we uh, developed it a bit further to our own uh, thing. So it's a tool that you can start, uh, that you can use at the start of a collaboration of renewal or regeneration. And you do it together with the stakeholders involved in a project. So it's really a co-creative instrument from the start of a project. You yeah, you find each other in um, thinking about this place and analyzing the place that you want to work on together, not only by an advisory uh, board or only the municipality, but really together. Uh, and by doing this, you really create co-ownership uh, within or between all the stakeholders um, at this project to, yeah, you feel like uh, owning this project together. So not only by just one party. Um, and by doing this place game, you also, you kind of really go into a place and you can see together what works at this place right now and what doesn't and where's room for improvement. So what you do uh, during this place game, it's a little bit crooked, but the, the, the core themes you can see, I guess. Um, so at the place game, you analyze place by tipping on all those core themes. Uh, and it's kind of like an onion. So you start with the, the core teams in the middle and then you peel them off more concretely by asking different questions on different topics. So first you have uh, sociability and that's uh, a lot about diversity. How welcoming is a neighborhood? Is it neighborly? Do people feel at home there? Uh, and more concrete, the outer circle is uh, what kind of local business are there are there are there any local businesses or not? Uh, what's the evening use of a place? And then the second team you tip on is uses and activities. You look at topics like how fun is a place? How active is a place? Is it useful? Are people going there or not? And more concrete, what kind of local businesses are there? And what's the property value? The third theme is comfort and image. Uh, you can look at topics like how safe is a place, is it green, is it attractive? And more concrete, you can ask the questions, what are the crime statistics and uh, what are the building conditions? Uh, 
And the fourth theme is access and linkages. So you tip on topics like uh, how connected is this place to other places? Is it walkable and is it accessible? And more concrete, how are the parking places used? Uh, what is the pedestrian activity? So you, you make it more and more concrete. And by, by using all these four themes, you can really get into a core of a place and really see uh, what's the, the current stat status and what are the topics or what are the questions that you think needs more improvement. So um, by, by doing that together with other stakeholders, I will show you in a minute how it looks like, um, you can really get to the core of, okay, where can we go from here? And what's really important at this place game, before you do it, because you do it at the start of a project, uh, before you do it, really make concrete together with all the stakeholders or with your client, what are the resources we have available? Because during this place game, you're going to start brainstorming together. You've got to make plans, like what can we do now in the short term, but also what can we do for the long term to make it a long-lasting, sustainable, nice place. Uh, and what you want, there is a lot of energy created during this place game. So you, uh, everybody has these uh, ideas and everybody's excited about it. Um, and it's a pity if you don't use that ideas immediately, but just leave it somewhere in a room and nobody looks at it again. Um, so if you know what resources you have, how much money, how much different yeah, resources uh, from the municipality or other stakeholders, you can really start working on these ideas, these short-term ideas that you define together. Um, it's actually uh, best to implement those like three, four weeks after the place game so people can see the results of their work, of their thinking, and they can see, okay, yes, this works, or maybe not, it doesn't really work, maybe we have to see further what other things could work, and you can really keep that energy flowing throughout the process. So usually what you see is like, okay, let's collect all these ideas, and then nobody sees them ever again. And with this place game, the aim is really to yeah, keep the energy. So this is an example of how a place game looks like. You can see different pictures of uh, people in groups. So you actually physically go into a place together with the different stakeholders. You usually in a group mix with different parties. So you're not only with your own company or with your, the people you know, <clears throat> but you're with different people. And you start just looking at a certain place of a street and see, okay, what's, uh, what's the pedestrian activity? So you kind of observe, but at one point you also go to people passing by or people working in shops and ask them questions like, what do you think is valuable here? Or what would you like to see changed? And by doing that uh, together, you can really have conversations about, okay, what's striking to you and what is uh, striking to me? And you have these really different aims because everybody looks a different way as a place. And you can start brainstorming and talking and discussing together how things work. And this is not only a really good way to analyze a place, but it's also a really good way to connect with each other. Because what you usually see, people have meetings next to each other. They don't really connect. They know, oh yeah, that person is from that company. Uh, but if you go together physically to a place, you would meet each other on a different way. And you can really start connecting with each other and see how other people look at things. Kind of really bridging, bridging the, the threshold maybe you have. So that's in short what tools we use, uh, one of the many. Um, it is a tool, so it's not like a method. It's, it's a small thing in a really big process, but it can really make it concrete uh, where you can work on. So you might think now, okay, what does a place game has to do with uh, Broodplaatsen? Well, here I have an example in Rotterdam. It's called Soho. Uh, on the left up corner, you can see an uh, empty building. Actually, nobody was working there, living there. It was just empty. A lot of parking spaces in front. And um, they asked Stipo to make it more alive again. So we went into the building, and we actually made it a Broekplaats. So we invited a lot of local artists, residents, um, creative entrepreneurs to come there and have their studio there or their working place there for affordable prices. And what you usually see at Broekplaats uh, is that they're really internally focused. So they know how, where to find each other inside the building. And they know, oh yeah, the, the person is from this place or from that place, but they don't always step out. So um, it's really important to connect with the neighborhood to 
show the value you have in the neighborhood and not only be, okay, we're this artist in this building and we're having a nice time, <laughs> but also what can we do for other people outside? So you can use this place game to do that, to really go outside, talk to people, see how people interact in the area. And what we did here is that we opened up the plinth, the ground floor, on the middle picture down. Uh, so you, we made it all glass so people can look inside. You really open up the building, welcome it. Uh, there was um, a coffee and a drink shop so people could just have a drink there. People living around it was affordable. Uh, we also made the parking spaces um, go away <laughs> with uh, green. So we planted some uh, grass, some flowers, so people could really relax in front of the building, have their lunch there, connect with the people around them. And also very important, we showed the artist to the outside by signage. So uh, everyone inside could just paint their company name on it uh, with an arrow, what way to go. So people passing by would know, okay, in this building there's a, a night atelier or a, a creative uh, studio. And that's really, um, yeah, a good way. Now it has way more value to the, to the neighborhood than it used to have. And you can really incorporate the residents around it and the neighborhood to really make it a long lasting, really nice place. So this is one way where you can use the Broekplaats and the place game together to make a more value for the city. Thank you, that's really short. Uh, but uh, I'll do a little discussion together with Katja. Yes, we will. Thank you very much, Shimona, first of all. Let's... <laughs>